Hi, and welcome to a video of a new project which I've just completed, which I'm quite excited about, which is to produce another version of a Sonic Pi theremin. But the major difference this time is in the sensor which is used. Previously, I've used this ultrasonic sensor, which is quite bulky and is um, rather prone to picking up reflections and doesn't have a very good resolution. This is now replaced by the very small breakout board here with a tiny infrared laser and receiver there and it measures the time of flight um, between your hand or whatever obstacle you place in the way and the board. Um, Pi Moroni who market it have arranged the breakout board so that it will plug directly into the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi and so it's very easy to set up and there is an accompanying library which is available which you can download which will let you communicate with it. Uh, you need to use a Python script in order to communicate with that and I've taken one of the examples that comes with the board and modified it so that it can communicate with Sonic Pi. And if we now scroll the camera upwards a little bit, pan it up um, and also possibly reduce the... field of view a bit. You can see that I've got two windows on the screen. At the bottom um, down here we have a terminal window and that is ready to run a script which is called osctheremin.py and above that we have a window of Sonic Pi and that has a program for the first version of the theremin which I'm going to demonstrate. I've actually got three versions here and in fact you could produce an infinite number because there are so many things that you can play with all giving different effects to what you finally hear. Now if we start that, um, well just before we start that script let's just have a very brief look at it. Uh, it will just about fit on the screen. I've got it actually just posted in idle here and you can see the text on the right hand side. Don't worry about trying to read this because uh, the script here plus full details of setup and the three specimen theremin programs which I've written will be available on a link uh, underneath this video to my blog where I've got the write-up stored. So we'll just get rid of that again to unclutter the screen a little bit. Um, let's minimise it. And we'll come down here, um, set that as the focus and start this running. Now what it does is it displays on the screen some details about the device and also at the bottom it says Sonic Pi is on IP127001. In other words it expects to send to Sonic Pi on the local machine 127001. There is a parameter described in the write-up which will enable you to just run the sensor on a Raspberry Pi and to send the OSC messages to Sonic Pi on a different machine. And I sometimes do this running Sonic Pi on my Mac and the sensor on the Raspberry Pi. Now, if I move my hand in front of the um, sensor, you should be able to see that the number at the bottom here is varying, but more to the point, you're getting a variation in the received OSC messages in the queue window on Sonic Pi. And it is those numbers which are going to control the uh, Theremin software which is going to run on Sonic Pi. That's really the end of the sensor as far as we're concerned about it. It's doing its job and producing varying numbers as we vary the range to an obstacle placed in front of it. And now we can concentrate on Sonic Pi. I'm going to make Sonic Pi the front of the screen and you'll still just be able to see the, the number picked up there and you could see down here what's arriving. And this is the simplest theremin program which we have in Sonic Pi at present and that is going to just um, let us produce a continuous smooth note and we can vary its pitch as we move my hand up and down. And I'm going to zoom right out now so that you will be able to see the sensor and also see my hand moving in front of it. We'll just move the ultrasonic one out of the way so we don't confuse things since it's not uh, relevant. And we're going to start the program running, which I'll do on Sonic Pi now. Yours, the screen will flash uh, a pink color as it runs. It is now running. You don't hear anything. In fact, we've got a problem there. Um, let's just stop that.
Okay, I think I know what happened. I had the program running already and I hadn't stopped it. And so Sonic Pi doesn't like that. Let's see whether that will sort things out a bit. Right, yes, it has. So we can go back to here. Sorry about that. Um, one of the things which I say in the write-up is because this program produces a very, very long note which sounds for a long time, you don't realise it's running, if you run the program again, then it tends to get a bit upset because it's using up uh, too many resources. So we've got it stopped now. It's saying pausing Super Collider audio service. I know that's stopped. We can now start it running again. And hopefully this time, yes, it is running. So this time I can now vary the... Uh, my hand in front of this, like that. So that's the first version. And you can see that that gives just a smoothly varying note, rather like a classical theremin, uh, which is done. I'm using a D-pulse synth there, but you can try other synths and uh, other frequency ranges as well. Let's stop that program running, and we will move on to the second buffer, buffer number one, the number from zero. And this program says that it uses the discrete note version. What it does is it uses the tri-synth, and instead of use it playing the, uh, uh, the frequency generated directly from the number, it uses it to look up the notes in the scale of G major, ranged over four octaves, I think, here. And there is the number that is coming from the um, sensor. It's actually scaled a bit here, I've divided it by 12 and turned it in, back into an integer. And uh, that is going to use to index the note which we're going to play. So let's play this one. Uh, we start it running and put my hand in front and we play a low note. But as I raise my hand, actually play a tune if you're very careful but the notes are fairly closely spaced but it is possible to change this 12 here if you use a slightly bigger number there then the uh, notes will be spaced further apart movement wise than the sensor although you may have to make some other adjustments to the range of notes here which are uh, going to play but uh, it can be done so you could in fact just have say one octave and it'd be much easier to get the particular note you were going to play but I think this sounds best just to produce um, uh, a, um, a stream of notes which sound really quite pleasing, like this. and then moving your ha other hand underneath, you can get nice variations between. So that's the second version. We'll now switch to the third version of the theremin which I've produced, which is here, and I've entitled it TB303 Frenzy, um, for reasons which I hope will become apparent when we uh, play it. It uses the TB303 synth, and uh, we can take advantage of the fact that we can supply some cutoff values to this to make it more interesting, which I've related to the actual frequency which we're going to play. And also, um, I've introduced the aux function, which is going to play two notes. Uh, I've chosen two uh, notes an octave apart, and it's going to switch between them each time it goes around the loop. And also, I've added a feature which is going to change the pan setting of the notes each time it plays between left and right. So all of these produce to give quite a, a zany sort of sound. There is a second version which we'll change to in a minute, but let's just start this first one going and see uh, what it sounds like. So we'll start that running. That's running. And now I'll place my hand over the sensor and let's see what it does. <coughs> I 
should have said, of course, that uh, one added feature is that it produces drums. There is a drum loop around here with three samples, BD House, Select Twip and Drum Symbol Closed and spread functions to give a bit of rhythm. But these are synced to a cue coming from the live loop above, which is only going to fire when a note is actually playing. So you can see that the drum loop stopped now because we're not actually physically playing at the moment. But as soon as I start playing again, the drum loop will start up again. Here we go. <laughs> version which is pretty frenetic I think you'll agree and if we stop that running uh, I'm going to make a change which suggested experiment changing that ox value there to this one where it's only going to play one note of those using the ox function it's just the simplest way to get back to playing one note is just to change the two to a one and I've actually ranged, changed the offset though to bring the pitch back up again because the low note is quite low that we were playing previously so we'll just take that, select there, and paste that back into place to take its place. There we go. And uh, got an extra space there, we'll just get rid of. And we're ready to run again. And this will sound slightly different. Here we go. <laughs> you get more of the cutoff effect there. It's also slightly frenetic. I feel pretty frenetic having been waving my arms around vigorously. Uh, but if we stop that. That is the end of the demonstration. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, this is a, a great little sensor. It obviously has lots of other applications with Sonic Pi or with just a Raspberry Pi. Uh, for example, in a burger alarm type of thing, just breaking a bean. Um, or you could use it um, for uh, with a robot uh, for collision uh, detection avoidance. Uh, and I think it'll probably give a much better result than the ultrasonic sensors do there. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. As I say, it was written up and there is a link to the write-up underneath this video. Thanks for watching.